Hey guys, Blazin here. So recently I just got done playing the Callisto Protocol DLC, The Final Transmission. Now, I don't know how long this video is going to be because I don't know if there's really a lot to talk about, but we're going to talk about it. I'm probably going to get into some spoilers in the, uh, within this video, so if you haven't played the DLC and you want to play it for yourself, then click out of this video. But maybe before you click out of this video, I want to tell you that playing this DLC might not be necessary. I'll, I'll leave you with that. Alright, if you decide to leave, then leave. Alright, I think the losers have left. Continuing forward, overall my thoughts on the DLC is that... Well, I mean, I just said it. I, I think it's pointless. Unless, like, from a... I, I, I should get this out of the way. Uh, if you were expecting any improvements to the gameplay, uh, there isn't really any of that at all. Uh, the DLC, from a gameplay standpoint, is just more of the same. Even though there's a couple new things in there, but the new things kind of, uh, it just boils down to the same thing. Dodging and whacking. You're, you're not changing, like, there, there's no there's no difference between the DLC and the main game. Now, on a narrative standpoint, I think it's uh, pretty pointless on that front. I think that's what, what I mean when I say the DLC is pointless. I say it's pointless from a narrative perspective. Like, if there was ever a Callisto Protocol 2, this DLC is pointless. Like, you don't you don't have to play the DLC to understand the sequel if there ever is going to be one. In fact, with uh, the way how it ends, it, maybe it's best if you don't play the DLC. <laughs> maybe I'll get into the ending a little bit later. But for the most part, this DLC is just more of the same, and... It took me about two hours to finish the DLC, so I'd say that's that's fine. I don't I didn't expect it to be another game. I guess uh, while I do say it's more of the same, I guess I'll talk about the some of the new stuff it, it does. So you know, let let's start with this one. So you know those vents that you crawl over all over the place in the main oh. game. Well, there's still some of that in this DLC. However, some of these vents are booby trapped. Prison has changed, Jacob. Don't let your guard down for a moment. So that's a cool addition, I guess. The next new addition, which is an enemy type, is the bio bot. Y you know those security bots that are really cool in the in the main game. Yeah, they're now they can't they're now infected in this DLC. Get down! Don't let it see you. Something new and indescribably dangerous. Be careful, Jacob. Unfortunately, they kind of fall apart. Because when you actually fight them... Who the fuck's calling me right fucking now? They, once again, just boil down to the same combat loop. You dodge a couple times and you whack them. The only unique thing they have is some this weird charge effect where they'll like charge up and kind of explode into a little EMP thingy. That that's all they have that's unique. Uh, other than that, it's kind of just a, a much tankier biophage, and they attack pretty fast. I'll say that. Like the their swings or their punches in between swings is, is pretty fast. Now when you first face it, it's like a mini boss. Something that's also kind of unfortunate is that. Well, maybe before I get into it, the the other and probably I think the last new addition really to this DLC, which uh, is the kinetic hammer. Now, unfortunately, though, you get this hammer pretty late into the DLC, the the final transmission. Even though you do get it late, there's at least a bunch of ugly mofo's waiting for you, basically right after you get it. Now, this thing is cool and it does have a ground slam. However, when used against the biobots, they're now literally just as if, you know, they're, they're, it's like they're not much of a threat anymore once you get the kinetic hammer. Now they're just like every other zombie piece of shit you fight. 
One unique thing I liked about the kinetic hammer though is that usually when those when the biobots charge up with their EMP thing, uh, before you get the kinetic hammer, normally you have to get away. Yeah, at least from my experience. However, if the biobots start to charge up their EMP blast, uh, you can actually charge up the kinetic hammer and ground slam and interrupt that attack from them. So I really like that and that continues your offense. Uh, there's also a bunch of yellow boxes you can smash open, or not really smash open, but like just smash in general. Uh, the ground slam also basically instantly kills any ugly mofo that stands in your way. Uh, that's pretty much just, that's pretty much the new stuff the DLC does. Which, like I said, even if they are new, quote-unquote, they, they kind of fall apart. Because, like I said, once you get the kinetic hammer against those biobots, they, they're just like any other enemy. They're no longer much of a threat. And I, I kind of expected that, because I know they were teasing them on Twitter, and I, I saw the new stuff. But I, I knew, I knew they were going to not be, like, anything new, or just, like, I know... Like, I knew going into this DLC there wasn't going to be a lot of difference or improvements or innovation or anything. I just, it, I expected more of the same and that's exactly what we got. Now I'm really going to get into spoilers because I'm going to talk about the boss fight a little bit. The, the final boss for the DLC. So if you don't want to hear it, click away. Okay, did more of the losers leave? Good. Now the final boss was alright. I mean, again, it's, it's, uh, it's more of the same. At least the boss doesn't insta-kill you this time. Thank god. I should also probably reveal that the final boss is the doctor that was in the main campaign. You know, the one that puts the chip in you? Yeah, she turns into an ugly mofo. But anyways, I thought for the most part the boss was alright, like, it's serviceable. The only thing I didn't like was that every time I got near her health, like, really low, I fucking die. Because of this stupid ground slam attack that she has. And it kind of, uh, I don't want to say auto tracks, but it, it, it kind of soft auto tracks. And because it kind of soft auto tracks, I kind of have no choice but to like block the attack. So essentially, I'm taking chip damage each time she does it. This attack is more of a problem when you get near her health because, like I said, from my experience, every time you get close, like when you're about to kill her, she does this attack a lot. And as a result, you're taking basically the full. You're you're taking a lot of chip damage to the point where you're gonna be like in red health. Now, one unique thing about this boss, though, is that she does have a fireball. <laughs> That she kind of spits out from her chest. And she fucking teleports. In fact, while she's in teleporting mode, she shoots three fireballs. Like Shakunetsu Hadoukens. But yeah, anyways, after you beat this boss, you get that that's basically the end of the game. And uh, I still don't fully understand what the fuck happened. Uh, he, he, Jacob died? Somehow? And, and he, he's really fucked up? And, and the doctor didn't die and she's still alive? Like, what, like, what, what, what was his DLC? Like, what did I just go through? Was it an illusion? Was everything fake? I mean, clearly, we we sent some sort of, like... Like, we sent some sort of data of proof or, or something. So, it wasn't all, uh... You know, we didn't lose Jacob for no reason. But, 
I this this is what I mean. Where it's just like they can, I feel like they kind of did Jacob dirty a little bit. Now they do send some sort of data, and then eventually the place they are in starts crashing down, and they fucking die. I guess. So they both end up dying anyways. So it's like the original ending ended off with a cliffhanger, and then this one, this DLC kind of ends Jacob's story, but also at the same time still leaves another cliffhanger, kind of. But either way, I like I like I said from the very beginning, this DLC feels pointless. Like they, I feel they did Jacob dirty. I feel like I would have rather him just pretend he he died fighting, in at the end of the original game, and and he explode with the facility. I, I think that's a much better ending. The, the way how he died in this DLC is, is, is honestly fucked up. Like I said, I think they did him dirty. Uh, I, I don't know. I kind of wish I didn't play the DLC. But hey, <laughs> at least I played it so you didn't have to. So, yeah, I guess that's those are my thoughts on the DLC. It was, it's, it was just more of the same. And, uh, you know, despite this DLC not being very good... I, I still am open for a sequel. Like, I'd still like for Striking Distance to try this style of game again. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Those, those are my thoughts on the DLC. So, if you enjoyed, please leave a like. And share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you want to stick around. Links to my shit are down in the description. And until next time, peace. Hey, where'd everybody go? Mahler! Louise! I'm not dead yet. I'm o I'm alive. I mean Jacob's dead, but I'm 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 still alive. This is Josh. Can somebody please let Whoa! What the f happened to my legs? What the f happened to my legs? Somebody Can somebody get me out of here? and bring me my goddamn legs!